I will. Shalom again, brothers and sisters. And we're going on with some of the new books. Um, sharing with you all some of the new books that we have um, published. And we get to see the first um, site sample. And um, let's continue right here. we got two more books. Right, two more books that have come in. So for for this day, we have four new um, titles. This one appears to have gotten a little beat up in traffic. You understand? Um, but these two new books right here, right? Um, this one here is the Ethiopic um, Orit, right? The Orit. The cover actually is from the Orit, from Genesis. Right, story of Rachel and Leah and, and Yaiko, you know, it's contained right there. Um and then we have this one right here, right? This one which is the which is called the Octatech. This is like book one actually. This actually has um Genesis to um Leviticus. This has Genesis to Leviticus here. So let's deal with this one first right here. Um, this particular one is called the Octatech in Ethiopic. And we have um, part one here. Part two will have the other, part two I think and three. But we've been able to publish um, book one here. And this is a good introduction. This one right here is, when we say Octatech, let's explain Octatech. We know the Pentateuch, right? The Pentateuch are the five books, or the five books of Moshe, or Muse, our Ethiopian Hebrew lawgiver, Moses, right? Um, when we say Octatech, this is very unique to, to the Ethiopian and the ancient Judeo-Christian canon of Ethiopia, where there were eight particular books, and these books were shared by both the Jewish or the the black um, Judeo community or the black Jews of Ethiopia, as well as by the the Christians, you understand the Christians as well. But tradition says that it was the Judeo root which was rooted in Ethiopia first, and this is what um, the Kibra Neges or the Queen of Sheba and her only son Minulik. This is why this particular book is important. So when we're speaking about these books, we're not just speaking about, okay, to read them and study them, but also for I and I, once we become more familiar with it, to actively um, reason on it and dialogue on it, because there's much to be gleaned and much to learn and there's much blessing in the wisdom of the word. And this is the half of the story that hasn't been told. And this is I and I divine heritage. You see, these books really is really what's worth more than gold because once you get that knowledge and you and you activate that truth and that knowledge and that blessing and that overcoming, you understand that right there is is the Most High. You understand it's the Most High's blessing pouring out to I and I because we're not just forgetful hearers of the word, but we're also seeking to be doers. But we have to first of all study it. And, and get to understand well what it what it is you understand and also pray and build up our inner life our spiritual life this is one thing this is the next next teaching I really want to get on because um some of the brothers and sisters who have been in personal communication with I and I have been you know many many ones are going through many different things in the world and suffering enough different tribulations in this particular seclorum, especially at this present time, especially if, if if you know you have a calling of Jah, but because of the world, because of things and time, because of mixed up moods and attitudes and men and people, you've you've been you've been um, disorientated, or, or you you you've been off track. You you you've stumbled. You understand, and and there's often time a lot of guilt. Still, ones are seeking to walk forward, but seeking to overcome certain um, um, spiritual warfare. One really needs 
to study the testimony and the words of Yeshua HaMoshiach. And, and, and the Psalms, even the Psalms, the daily Psalms are very important to learn to meditate, you know, learn what meditation is. And this is a, a, a teaching that I've touched on it a little bit in a couple of videos, but I want to I want to, I vote a, a vid to this, or really a series of teachings to this, because things that I and I have learned, have done, and also have fallen short on being consistent or as consistent as I and I have been. You know, so it's not just about learning these things, becoming um, 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 always learning, but never able to come to acknowledgement of the truth. We must come to acknowledgement and acting on that knowledge of the truth. So it's it's the spiritual power that is in Pearl Majesty reminds I and I of, and that relationship to the true God, the true Jah, the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the name of the Moshiach, in the name of Yeshua, and then learning how to to live right, you understand, and learning how to forgive and, and, and learning how truly to love Jah, you understand, by by keeping his commandment, you understand, that that is to, to, to love him, so we have to learn of it. So these particular books, going a little bit off on that subject matter, um, because that subject matter, I want to go a little bit deeper in that particular matter and, and share with ones and ones, and, and hopefully ones will be able to receive it. But I want to talk about some of these books here because I'm very, you know, finally to have like a hard copy, you know, where, where I and I can, you know, study books like Genesis. You know, this is this is in the Ethiopic, you understand, or the Goodness, you understand, but it's, it's foundational, especially if we start to approach these studies, you understand, these scripture studies, right? If we start to approach these particular studies as studies, you, you see, it's it's not just about um, learning to say a bunch of random things, or you know, like I mentioned, going to a restaurant or something like that. But as we say, we're studying this portion, like we try to touch on the word midrabeda, you understand? And we can go on a little bit deeper into beda. You understand? And midra, you understand? This means this means like earth in the sense of land. But there's also other words that refer to earth and land, and each of them has a particular context. This is why books like um, the Midbar, you understand, are important too. The different Torah portions, because there we see an ancient art of reasoning. You understand that many of uh, the European Jews, in a sense, was our own people, our own Ethiopian Jewish or Beta Israel, so-called Falasha people, and and they have many manuscripts like Falasha anthology, which I think is out there. So even if ones can't afford to get a copy of it, there are certain websites out there and certain resources out there, and we try to put some of them on our website as like free shareware, free download, like study materials, additional like resources that ones can utilize. You understand? But when it's possible for ones to get hard copies of a lot of these documents, it's, it's very important. It's like they say, get a print. If it's, a, if it's an important piece of paperwork, try to get it in print. You understand? Try to get a print copy of it as well because a lot of this technology that we're using you know, we don't really know what's going to be the result of it in time to come. But one thing we recognize by even ancient times is that the written word, you understand, is, is very important to preserve and also encouraging the Dek Amezamorit that in discipleship writing is so very important. You know, and I hope to try to encourage the brothers and sisters you know, because I begin to understand that being a disciple is like being almost like, you know what, they get the idea of clergy, like a cleric, you understand, a clergy, that the true idea um, of a disciple 
and it is it's learning. It's like learning the the letters, learning learning the code, um, learning key words, especially key words that will help ones to grow. When we speak about like prayer, you know, saying certain key words of prayer, and and certain psalms uh, are key things, key meditations to seek to learn it by heart and start out with a couple of words. But we're going to get on get into that when we get into meditation because once we begin to recognize what does meditation truly mean from its scriptural, its Hebraic, its afro shemitic its, its Ethiopic root, all of that is, is part of the same root language. You know what I'm saying? When we see the true roots of, of true biblical Judaism is in, in Africa. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's from that very um, 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 root that, that it springs forward. And this has been proven in many other ways. But here the Ethiopic, the Ethiopic um, 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 Octatech are the eight books. So it's, when we say Pentateuch, we mean the five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. But when we're speaking about the, the, the true Ethiopic Torah, it is known as the Octatech. And now this version that we showed you previously is a fuller, um, a fuller version. Now there's some notes in the back. What we had to do with this, um, what we had to do with this particular copy is we had a limitation of pages. So there's like a footnote um, resource at the back. The only um, challenge is, is, I think, written in, in um, uh, Ethiopic and Latin because we find that many of these ancient works, like this particular work from like 1853, you understand, and it was recovered in some Latin documents um, and Ethiopic documents which were first compiled by Augustus Dillman, you know, saying the great August Dillman, who his Majesty calls the German, um, the German Dillman. I mean, he was a, a very great, you know, Gentile European man, but it, it, he discovered that truth and sought to bring that truth to life and to light, even among his fellow Europeans. He's in the same category as. Um, 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 Job or Eo, Ludolf. Ludolf is, is another one, but this particular one, let's see if you can get you uh, uh, a look of this. You can see a look of the text right there. It's also available. This is the Ethiopic. And this has, this has the five books, including um, Judges, right? Um, well, actually, Joshua. Judges and Ruth. So when we say Octatech, we mean the eight books. You know what I'm saying? So when we talk about the Ethiopic Torah, it's not really Pentateuch in the quote modern Jewish sense, but in the original sense, it, it was eight particular books. And these eight books are the five books of what we know as the, the Hebrew or Masoretic Torah, including Joshua. Yasu Woda in their way and Mesafint or Judges and the book of Herut or Rut, the book of Rut. Now, from the traditional or modern Torah perspective, if you understand those five books, the I mean those five books plus those three books, which together make eight books. And how each of those eight books, especially Ruth, you know, saying Ruth is a very interesting book. I think when either the Torah is given, um, Ruth is read, but there's there's a particular holy time where the book of Ruth is accompanied, you know, saying as reading and meditation, even the Song of Songs as well. So these books are also integrated and they work together, you know, saying within the life of I and I people. So they're not just books just reading about ancient things, but there's also a real-time application, both on the spiritual level, psychological, and even the actual physical um, manifestation 
of 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 this word. So this word applies to our tripartite state. Now this book is a kind of a thick book where we went up to almost the limit here. You understand? But this one we would highly, highly recommend. Either of these, you understand, are are recommended. Um the style of um the style of, of, of photography is interesting in both of these. In this one, we have the showing, right? And in this one, we have like an anvil, a kind of a anvil type of font. It's, it's almost like a, a, a fancy Ethiopic. It might be a little difficult for some, some, some new readers. You understand? So that's one reason why we publish both of these particular books right here. Um, but as we go forward, hopefully we'll be able to, you know, deal with much more of this in kind of real time and everything and in tune with, you know, the particular teachings as we're about to complete this particular cycle here. And y'all willing and I and I live, we can go forward into the new cycle, you understand, and now bring the Ethiopic Torah and the Orit more online. And getting to know about the 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 Octatech, you understand, it's not like the architect, but the Octatech is really the the the, the eight books of the true architect, the God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshiach. So with all that being said, my brothers and sisters, just wanted to show the I them some of the new works and those who are supporters of this ministry and prayer and, and, and tithes or donations or, or orders for the various different offerings and works and 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 educational DVDs and other sort of materials that we have available. I and I thank you all in, in the King of Kings name and the Hashem's name, Yovasan, and the name of Girtachinam and Hanatachin Iesus Christos. So once again, um these four books right here, the Ethiopic Torah is now as we can say, online. The Ethiopic Torah is now online. So we don't really have any excuses. Now we really have to get into the intensive schooling and those intentional disciples. Um, we would highly advise and recommend, you know, um, these works right here, especially for the ones who are seeking to grow in their sabbatical studies. Um, the next best thing, as we recommended before, would be to check out the Wikipedia with I and I Sabbath House readings chart, and you can go there and you can either save it or print it out from online, so forth and so on. But probably the best thing would be to just invest in getting a copy of the Torah portion that we're at right now, which is the Midbar by Midbar, and um, Next coming up is Devarim, but when we have this, we can begin to study, and most of our kind of fact-checking of this, of Torah, and what we're learning of the Torah will be conducted with these sort of books and documentations. And the other book that we had shown, which is this one right here, which is the Ethiopic Didascalia, or the Didascalia, and it has the manuscript in it, um, at least um, the majority of it. But it's not the full. It's not the full manuscript. But this is what interesting. He says it was the full manuscript. The publisher, Thomas Platt. But it was um, this first book that we published, uh, Ethiopic through the Scylla, that made the note that he said that ironically, but he didn't publish it. You understand? So this one came out first and had the Ethiopic translated or uh, translated alongside the, the Ethiopic text. Now this one is a full translation. So like if ones want to know, well, which one, if they can't get both of them, which one should they get at least first? You would say get this, this one right here, 
you this one first, and then afterwards, this one will be a good a good reference copy. You understand, especially because it has the Ethiopic, it has the Ethiopic text in it. You understand, and the Ethiopic text right there is we're we'll getting to the root. You understand, getting to our own root because language is the key of communication between man and man. So these are some of the new books, brothers and sisters. Um, give thanks for the eye prayers. Um, um, good well wishes, advice, words, and we're seeking to organize for Jah's ministry. And um, so we're calling on all of those um, disciples who are, have been sticking with the regular um, readings and feedings and getting a chance to check these videos. Um, we're seeking to try to learn more and apply more so we can really start to get the wheels of Jah's of John's machinery, you understand the kingdom machinery and 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 the King of Kings economy. You understand the economy is not just money. You understand the real the real currency. What is that real? What's the real currency? Is is the spirit? You understand it's John's spirit and his will and the knowledge of him. You understand so then we can get to the application because he says all these other worldly and material things are his. You understand he's send his son Yeshua, you will send for the salvation of our souls, that's our psyches, and when you start to learn his words, the words of Christ, you understand, in spirit and in truth, and for I as Rastafari, and, but sometimes I feel that I have to direct this to certain Rastafari for whatever reason, whether the whitewashing has, has kind of disorientated one, this is why I say Right here, one needs to get a copy of this. You understand? Know get a copy of this. This is from the exposed DVD right here. And this will break down to you. It's called My Name is, is Caesar Bogiers. And I did a video, a couple of videos ago, where I, where I talked about this. But I point it out because some still have the whitewash. And th that needs to be deconstructed for ones. Ones need to understand the basic history of it. If they want to go into it deeper, they can, but this here gives a, a good overview and the ones and ones that compiled it independently of I and I still included I and I vids, some of them that you've seen, but some extra and other videos that, that were really for I were very, very touching, especially on the black Christ and the struggle in South Africa as well. So, my brothers and sisters, this is a vid that's out there. Check it out. Get a copy of it. You understand? Or just check it out on the YouTube. My name is it's called My Name is Caesar Cesare um, Borgia, right? My name is Cesare Borgia, and this is it right here. All right, all right. Shalom, Ras Tafari.